So Randy was talking about the turning, the great turning. That we get the turning points in our lives, and the solstice is one of those kind of turning points for the earth and for our lives as well, if we want to make it one. So I've been thinking a lot about the, in these dark days at the end of 2012, I've been thinking a lot about the uh, dark days of our country with the things happening in Connecticut and all around. And so I, whenever I get into a real difficult place where the, things don't make sense anymore, I get out my drum. And then I start, to, I start to drum and I try to look for a rhythm. I try to, try to find a rhythm back into my life. And so I've been, I've been drumming a lot these last, since a week ago, Friday, when we heard the news about those children and what happened. And so I, I've been drumming and I always look for stories, wisdom from, from the world's cultures. And so I came across this story from the Native American people, the Native people of this land, and how they understand that the world never ends. And this, I heard this story from Michael Mead, this great storyteller and mythologist who talks about, he's just written a book about how the world never ends, just in time for the Mayan calendar and all that <laughs> stuff that's been happening. And so I wanted to share with you this story today because I think it's relevant for all of our lives as well as what's happening all around us. So uh, let's see if I can find that rhythm again and, and we'll, uh, we'll tell a little story. Once upon a time, back before time was something a lot of people were doing in prisons, back when time was a rhythm instead of a punishment, back in those times, here in this land, the people knew that there was a cave, and in that cave, there was an old woman, and that old woman was weaving the most beautiful garment in the world. to the trim at the edge of the garment and she wanted to make the last part really special and so she started to use porcupine quills but in order to weave the porcupine quills she had to flatten them and so she did that with her teeth she'd been flattening these quills for hundreds maybe thousands of years and so her teeth had gotten so worn down that all that was left were these little nubs that stuck out beyond the gums and every once in a while she would stop and she would go to the back of the cave and she would go to this cauldron in which there was this great soup made up of all the herbs and all the green plants and seeds and grains and good things of this earth and she would stir the cauldron because underneath there was a great fire they say it's the ancient fires that created the world and if she didn't go and stir the soup once in a while things would get burned and we'd have a lot of problems but she moved kind of slow did I say she was an old lady did I tell you that so she moved kind of slow and she stirred kind of slow and so while she was over there stirring the dog what dog, right? The dog that lived with her in the cave went over to this beautiful garment she was weaving and saw this one little thread, this one string that was kind of sticking out. It didn't look quite right, and so it started to pull on that one thread, and you know how this goes. One thread's connected to all the other threads, and pretty soon the entire garment was laying unraveled on the floor of the cave. So when the old lady got back, all she saw were the threads unraveled, all her work, all that time, and she actually noticed in the big jumble mess on the floor some new patterns, got some new ideas, and she started weaving all over again. Now there are people who say, you know, if it weren't for that dog, to finish that garment, that beautiful garment, if we could just get rid of that pesky dog. But the elders say that it's 
that dog, if that woman were ever to finish weaving that beautiful garment, the entire world would come to an end. So they say, and you know, the elders are supposed to look at things a little more deeply than the rest of us. And they say that the problems, the troubles, the difficulties in the world, they also bring in the creativity and the beauty of the world. And we need it all. Well, now we have no proof that the elders are right about this. But the way I look at it, if the elders don't know, who does? <laughs> Thank you. Now when I usually tell this story and I have more time and I'm in a smaller group, I ask people to sit for a minute or two and just think, where, where in that story do you find yourself? And, and I just let people soak it in and people say incredible things. They, I, for example, one time somebody said, oh, oh, that's me, stirring the cauldron, just keeping everything going, making sure nothing gets burned. I'm the responsible one. I'm the one who's always doing all that, making sure all the, none of the balls fall. So we just, I just keep it going and uh, paying the mortgage, paying a bill, all those things. But then my creative pursuits, the things that I care about most get neglected. And someone else said, you know, oh, when I heard that story and you talked about the, un, you know, that woman coming back and seeing her, her life work all those years just unraveled on the floor and having to start over, I person said, that's, that's me right now. I, I think about my marriage that just ended. All that work, all that time, all that effort, and now it's just unraveled on the floor. I got to start over. I heard someone, a widower, said that once. It's, it's my... Uh, my wife died. We were 40 years. We were over 40 years. We were married. And now I got to start over? Someone else talked about uh, the dog when it pulled that one little thread and then the whole thing came apart. Somebody said, that reminds me of my religious journey right now. I started pulling on a little thread that I thought didn't look quite right. And pretty soon the whole thing, like a house of cards, was on the floor. It was a big mess and I had to start over. And it's scary and it's exciting at the same time to rebuild and reweave and re-understand my relationship to God and my religion and the Bible and all of those different things. Some people, I know someone, you know, people who's just this past year had house fire. Your house burned. Two people at two different families in this church in 2012 had fires. And you're just looking at all your stuff, gone, so much of it destroyed, having to start over from the beginning. There's so many ways people connect. People who've lost their jobs, been laid off, having to begin again. Some, someone told me they, they, they feel like they're the dog right now. They said, you know, I, I, everything I touch seems to turn into a problem for somebody else and for myself. I'm just creating wreckage on all, on all sides everywhere I go. And someone else said, the dog reminds me, the dog in my life is my addiction to alcohol or to drugs or to gambling. It's just, it's just unraveling my marriage and all different aspects of my life. And so different people, and I hope you'll take some time over the next, t today or the next few days, thinking about where this story touches you. But one of the things that the elders tell us about these stories, and you, and you find these stories with these same three themes throughout so many cultures, and the themes are creation, creativity, that's the weaving. The other theme is uh, maintenance, nurturing, sustaining. That's the soup, stirring the soup. And then the third one is the, the dog, the destruction, right? So creating, sustaining, and destroying. And you see these themes in everything. And the fact is they're all there. They're all going to be there. They're always there. And what keeps the world going is the balance between the two. And if there's if we're out of balance between the creative side and the maintaining side, then a dog's coming to tear it all apart. We can guarantee you and, and create some more balance. So you might know a, a musician or an artist who's just, they're all into their creativity and they're just, they're like an absent-minded professor doing their art and doing their thing and they're not taking care of the day-to-day. -day. They're not maintaining their relationship. They're not maintaining their mortgage or they're paying the bills or taking care of the home, which is starting to crumble. And because they're overweighted in the creative side, pretty soon things start crumbling and they're forced back into maintenance and taking care of things. So that's, that's kind of how it works. And people who are just maintaining and they're the responsible ones 
and they're not allowing their hobbies or their creative outlets to come out in their lives because they're always taking care of everything for everyone, then they, they feel that loss. They feel that lack. And, that, and, the, and the dog there that comes out is usually depression or suicidal thoughts or people start looking for substances that will help them feel better about their life because all it's about seems to be a stirring and there's nothing creative and life-giving there. So we got to find that balance, and we got to find it for ourselves. Otherwise, the dog's going to come and bring it to us. And the reason I've been thinking about this particularly this week is because of what's happening in our national culture as well. This isn't just about us individually. This is about our national culture. And the thing is that with the events in Connecticut and all those children who were killed, it just, if that doesn't, if we can't feel that in our heart, we've got a real problem. And if our culture doesn't shift and start reweaving a new pattern around mental illness, around guns and violence, if we don't see this as a sign, it's time to start reweaving. Our ideas about guns and how to deal with the mentally ill are laying unraveled at our feet. And if we don't see that, if we keep just trying to weave the same pattern, the same culture around these things that we've been doing over and over and over again, we're going to keep that dog, going to keep biting us, and our ch it's going to affect our children, and it's going to affect all of us in our communities. There were like five schools in Tulsa that were locked down last week. I mean, it's affecting all of us psychologically, if not physically. And so, you know, here's, here's the thing. So somebody said that the answer to this is more guns. The NRA, I think, came out, the head of the NRA came out and said, we, just, we need to put a gun in every school everywhere in America, a guard with a gun. That's like saying to the old woman in the cave, that all you need to do, you know, forget about all, you know, forget about all this, uh, just get a, yourself another dog and teach it to guard the garments while you're going over there to stir the soup and then everything will be fine. But you know, if you remember the story and how it goes, that's not how, that's not, that, you know where that leads. And so we need to sustain this. This can't be another way in which America just, we know we get on to the next 24-hour news cycle and some new event happens. Now, we got holidays and exciting things and New Year's, and we're going to celebrate a new year, but let's make part of our pledge in this new year to sustain the effort around change in our culture around these things, in particular, and bullying in schools and all of those things. We can make a difference. we got programs here at the church, and we need to keep uh, pressure on our legislators to do the right things. So in your life... I don't know where this story hits you in your own life. I talked about the collective culture, but in your life too, in these darker days, as the year's finishing up, as you're thinking about the renewal and your New Year's resolutions and things like that, go inside and see where, what's working you and where you are with regard to your balance of creativity and maintaining your life. And make sure that you find a life-giving balance so that you go into the new year fully alive with a clear sense of possibility because your dreams are meant to be lived while you're alive. And as Pastor David said, every day is a gift. And we don't, as Randy said, we don't know what tomorrow brings. So let's not wait. Let's start living our lives more fully, finding the balance between dark and light and loving one another. God bless you. Merry Christmas. <laughs>